Hello, my name is Fahin and I'm from CDU Library and I'm one of the librarians that support the Faculty of Health and also Menzies. In this session, we will be learning how to create a question, search and evaluate information. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge all the First Nations people across the lands on which we live and work and we pay our respect to elders both past and present. I'm in Sydney, so I'm in Gadigal land. So the content of this uh, presentation, this uh, inf informative session, is your question and PICO, search strategy, databases, MESH, which we'll explain later, evaluating resources and other library resources that can be useful to you. Okay, now in, in this session, we will be going through each and every single one of them, and I'll go and show you how to comprehensively search through many databases and create your question. Okay, so feel free to pause this video, stop, reflect, write down notes. We, I will be talking at a faster pace and feel free to also pause to screen grab and write things down and see what's on our PowerPoint today. First off, your question. Now you need to figure out what you want to focus on, okay? And for this example, I want to focus on adults, binge drinking and mortality. This is my topic of research and this is what I want to focus on and write a paper or, or do a project on. Now, the first thing you need to figure out is how to write that question. Um, and in, in the health sciences, we generally stick to PICO, PECO, or P PICO with a small O. Now, these are the two main ones that we stick to in the health sciences, but we do have a number of other answerable question frameworks, as you can see in this slide here. So it's CLIP, Eclipse, Spider, and Spice. Again, it depends on the type of question and your area of research that you want to focus on. Okay, If you were looking at policy, you would use SPICE. Um, if you were looking at uh, more so a social science question, you can also use SPIDER. It depends on the type of qu um, question or your area of research that you wanted to focus on. But generally in the health sciences or in nursing, midwifery and in public health, um, we can stick to PICO, PECO or PICO with a small o. We can fit it in. Um, and these are only frameworks. Okay, um, you sometimes your research area, area of research doesn't fit a framework, but frameworks make make it easier for us to create an answerable question. Okay, so I will be using PICO as an example throughout this presentation. So PIC with a big O, um, which stands for population intervention comparison and outcome right here. So PICO. Um, how would you describe a group of patients? Okay, that's the P. What are your most important characteristics of the patient, patient population, or even problem? I, intervention. What main intervention, prognostic factor, or exposure are you considering? What do you want to do for the patient? C, comparison. What is the main alternative to compare with the information? Now, not all PICO questions might have a comparison, or sometimes the question might not have a comparison at all. It could be just implied. Um, and then we have the outcome, okay? What can you hope to accomplish, measure, improve, or affect? What are you trying to do for the patient? So here is um, my PICO question. In adults, is binge drinking compared with non-binge drinking associated with an increase in mortality? Okay, so as you can see, I've got a little table here, and now this it's very handy to create a table when you're when you are writing your Pico question. It just visualizes things and makes things a little bit easier for you to hash out, and you'll understand what I mean in a moment. So we've got patient intervention, comparison, and outcome. So our patient is adults. Our intervention is binge drinking or exposure, binge drinking. Uh, comparison is no binge drinking and our outcome is mortality. And those are your main search terms in the right column, right hand column right here. Okay. Notice how for the comparison, we can leave blank in terms of search. We do not search no binge drinking. 
Okay, the question could be in adults is binge drinking compare um binge drinking associated with increase in mortality. So we don't necessarily have to put non binge drinking into our question. But for example's sake, I did it because these are polar opposites of each other. So when when your um intervention and comparison are polar opposites of each other, there sometimes is not a need to put the comparison in the um in the question at all but for clarity's sake we do put it in so that's really a choice for you to make and you should also talk to your supervisor about this as well again it is very dependent on the type area of study that you are focusing on so here we go moving on to our search terms our three search terms were adults binge drinking and mortality. Remember, we are not searching the comparator because it is the direct opposite of our intervention, which is binge drinking versus non-binge drinking. Okay, so I've got a number of um, search, search terms for adults. We've got adults, adulthood, young adult. Feel free to think of as many more as you want. We can really hash this out. But like I said, to keep things short and sweet, I've only got three there. Binge drinking, again, heavy drinking, excessive drinking, there's a lot more. Mortality, death or loss of life. Feel free to add more synonyms, okay? Do create a table, okay? So we have your population, intervention and your outcome. Now you might have um, another a, a, another column, another another concept in your in your question. That's that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. Like I said, going back to our answerable frameworks in the beginning that I showed you, you might have five concepts. You might have spice or spider. Again, depends on the type of question. But for this example, we're using three. So adults, binge drinking and mortality with their synonyms. Now, before we actually do search, we need to understand what the Boolean operators mean. And it doesn't make sense until I actually show you how to do it. So have no fear, there will be a demonstration. So Boolean operators are little operators in between your words that you can control the breadth of your search or even narrowness of your search, okay? Now, Google puts all but when you search something in Google, it automatically puts or in between your words. But when we are using more complex databases, we have to learn how to use these operators ourselves, okay? Now, if there's any millennials in here, um, you would recognize uh, these little cartoons, Cat Dog. <laughs> it's a really great, it was a really great children's program when I was growing up. But I felt like it encapsulated um, what the AND operator does, okay? Um, so we're, let's just say we're searching for puppy and kitten and in terms of their diet, we're looking at similarities in their diet. Now, don't quote me on that. I know nothing about puppies and kittens. But for example's sake, if we're going to find something that we wanted to narrow the terms for, we put and in between. Now, if we want to broaden the term, our search terms, we put or in between, okay? And we get the whole lot. And I hope that makes sense. But um, it will once I show you. Now, this is how our PICO search will work. And this is how we use our Boolean operators to get exactly what we want. So we've got concept one, concept two, and concept three. Um, that's our uh, population intervention and outcome. You might have a concept four if you have another comparator that's completely different or a concept five. Again, it depends on your question. Um, and then we have all our synonyms that we came up with. So synonym one, two, and three for concept one, we combine with all. Concept two, synonym one, two, three, four, five, whatever you have combined with all. Concept three, combine them with or as well, all your synonyms. And then you combine each concept with and. And then you get exactly what you're after. All right. I'm going to show you how to do this on library search first because it's a little bit more simple. Um, I'm going to change screens in a moment. So just bear with me. All right. All right, cool. You should be able to see that. Let me make sure that's easy for you to have a look at. Okay, this is CDU Library. You should be very familiar with this. If not, feel please explore 
the library website. Um, it's very cool. There's a lot of research, uh, resources on it that can help you in other areas of your study. Okay, but this is library search. Now we are going to focus on advanced search. Oops, let's click on advanced search. Okay, now you might have quickly noticed there was a login sign there. Um, you do need to log in. It's just your email and your password. Because I'm a staff member, it automatically logs me in. But generally, there will be a login sign right here. Okay, now this is what your search will look like. Now, notice all of these. Just have a look. So enter search term, enter search term. And here's our Boolean operator. Okay, now we have three concepts, so I'm going to add in a new line. Okay, three concepts. Now, our first concept, as you can see, I've done this um, search before, is adults. I'm going to put a little star because by putting a little star after the T, I'm going to search adult, adulthood, adults. So all the endings that you can think of, okay? And as I've done this search before, I put young adult. And we put or in between. Now, you don't need to put or in capitals, okay? I strongly suggest it, though. And the reason we put the or in capitals is because, number one, it's easier to read through your concepts in your uh, little search bar, um, sorry, your synonyms, not your concepts, it's easier to read. And also not all databases will register the small OR, but all databases will register the big OR. So instead of confusing ourselves, which ones do and which ones don't, it's better to just keep it consistent amongst all of the databases. So I want you to get into the habit of putting your O at OR in capitals in between your synonyms, okay? And then we have to make sure that that's and, not or, so and. And remember, the other one was binge drinking. Binge drinking or heavy drinking or alcohol abuse, feel free to put more. Okay, and then we have mortality or death or um, loss of, oops, life. Okay, make sure the ands are between here, okay? And then we hit search. Awesome. Going down, we have 8,000 results. That's quite a lot. Okay, now you can go down to the side over here and put in some filters. We want peer review journals. And I'll explain what peer review is in a moment. Um, peer review journals. We also want something in the last 10 years. Now, generally speaking, in the health sciences, we like to focus in the last 10 years um, to find out information. However, again, this is really dependent on the type of assignment or um uh, research that you're doing, okay? But I'm going to focus on the last 10 years. You can focus on the last five, last seven, again, depending on your question, okay? Now, if you only want to focus on journal articles, feel free to click that too. But we have a range of resources here for you to go through. And then we're going to do apply filters, Again, 3,000 results. I'm going to do something. I'm going to click remember all, all filters um, because I can choose to change this. And when I do change this, if I click remember all filters, I don't have to go through this process again. Okay. Now what library search does, it attempts to go through every single one of the databases that we subscribed through. Okay. Uh, library search is not as powerful as database searching, which is why I'm also going to show you that. But if you wanted to um, change your search, let's just say you wanted to add a new line. And I want to put Australia. I want to focus on Australian studies. 
Okay, so Australia with a little star at the end will search for Australia, Australian, all of those search terms. Um, and there we go, 334 results. Australian studies right here. Now you might get some Southeast Asian studies or even some New Zealand studies as well. That's because um, the Australia uh, key keyword or the search term often might include Australasia as well or ANZ, so Australian New Zealand studies. That's just something you're going to have to cut out through reading the title and abstract, okay? Um, so it's not always 100% accurate, but it is accurate enough that you have a nice set of results right here, 334. Now, by doing this through library search, by showing you this, you've actually learned how to conduct a search in all the other databases, more or less, okay? Um, library searches are really good for scoping through your topic or through just getting a general background of what you wanted to learn about your area of research. All right, I did mention peer review and I'm just gonna go back to my PowerPoint. Now, peer review is designed to assess the validity and quality and often the originality of articles for publication. Its ultimate purpose is to maintain the integrity of science by filtering out invalid or poor quality articles. You can check peer review status on all RICs. Now, peer review is a process that when you decide to publish, uh, a bunch of experts will read that article and just basically give it a thumbs up. Um, so, the, and different publishers have different processes for peer review. Um, and you can find those processes, for example, if uh, let's just say a publisher like Wiley um, if you just Google peer review process Wiley, you will find their peer review um, process, essentially, and how they go through it. And you can do that with any publisher on Google. It will find it. Now, this is really important, uh, peer review, especially if you're using Google to find your resources. Now, most of the library resources are peer reviewed resources, okay? Peer review can be a video. It can be uh, an article, a book, it doesn't matter. Anything can be peer reviewed. Uh, it's not limited to journal articles. Um, it can also be videos as well. Um, you just have to find out if they are. Um, government resources are generally not peer reviewed, um, but there is a consensus amongst uh, industry experts that government resources are reliable to use as well. They have to be. Um, so if you are looking at grey literature, it's really generally government organisations or uh, NGOs that uh, um, have a standard to meet, we can use that information. For example, WHO, World Health Organisation, not all of their work is peer reviewed, but um, their reports and stuff, um, but you can use them. Um, but if you wanted to, let's just say you found a journal article on Google, but you're not sure if it's peer reviewed, there is a way to find out. Now I'm going to go back to the library website. Okay. And we are going to go back to library home. I'm going to open it into a new tab. We're going to go into databases. And we're going to go into Ulrichs, which is under U. Take some time but that's okay. I'm going to use a really well-known journal um, name as an example, um, but you can do this with any, any journal. Let's just say you found something on Google Scholar, not sure what it is, but uh, the journal is Nature. There we go. And you can find out 
uh, what it is. There we go, Nature Publishing Group. Notice this little referee T-shirt here. That means that it's peer reviewed or refereed. Okay. And you can view details. Um, there we go. About their peer review. Okay, this means that it's been peer reviewed. You can go down and find out so many other, uh, so much more information about uh, this journal article. So this is essentially how you will check if a article is peer reviewed, okay? Just by searching the title of the journal. Okay. Moving forward. Database searching. So we're going to go into databases. Now you might be thinking, why do we have to search databases when we have library search? Um, it's because the databases, A, have their own interfaces, so therefore you're more likely to get a refined set of results from those set databases. Um, the databases I'm going to show you today are Medline, Sonal, PsycInfo, Informit, and Scopus, Joanna Briggs Institute, and the Cochrane Library. Okay, now these databases are very powerful, powerful tools. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you, at least with Medline, Sonal, and PsycInfo, two ways of how to search them. Okay, um, there are multiple ways you can use them. And it, again, it depends on what you are expected to do in your search. Um, let's just say you're just trying to find some background information. There is an easier way to search. Now, if you're trying to incorporate things like mesh headings and have a more systematic search for your research, um, there is another way of searching. So I will show you both. Um, it does take some practice, but once you do it, once you understand it, it becomes easier. So I am going to go back into our databases and I'm going to go into Medline. Oh, where's Medline? There we go. Now, the really cool thing about Medline, Sinal, and PsycInfo is that they're on a platform called EBSCOhost, okay? Which is a good thing if you're just doing a general search because that means you can search all three databases at the same time, okay? Um, if you were to incorporate Mesh, and I will explain this later, um, mesh into your Medline, Sonal, and PubMed, uh, not PubMed, uh, and PsycInfo searches, you cannot search them all at the same time. And this will make sense later on in the video as well. Okay. I strongly encourage you guys to sign in or make an account within EBSCO because then you can save your searches. You should do so with your institutional emails and passwords. Okay, now I'm going to show you the easy way to just do a general search within these databases. Now, these general searches um, are still just as powerful. Okay, now I'm going to choose database. So I've got Medline, PsycInfo, and Sonal. Okay, and just click show all. All right. It doesn't matter if that's green. It really doesn't do anything. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into advanced search. Now, this is what it will look like. Now, we're going to do the same thing that we did here. Just copy and paste it over. Okay. Exact same thing. Okay. Work smarter, not harder, guys. 
and you can do this. You can also add in a line if you wanted to add in Australia, but we won't do that for now. Um, I'm just going to click here just so it gives me peace of mind that I am searching through all three. I'm going to hit search. Nice. We have 6,000 results right here. That's quite a lot. Okay. Again, we're going to limit to 2013. Enter. Last 10 years. Okay, and then we're going to go into academic journals. There we go. 2,000 results. Still quite a bit. If you wanted to refine yours to a location, Australia, put a little asterisk, hit search. 108. Okay, it's still got the limiters there. So a very good set of results. Now, I would not um, limit to full text, okay? And the reason I say this is because sometimes we might already uh, subscribe to that journal article, but it's just not showing here. For example, it says check CDU holdings for full text. This one as well. However, the information highways just do not connect with each other. They're not, they're not talking to each other, our subscriptions versus what we're finding through here. So you just click onto that. And it takes you to the library website. Give it a moment just to see if it's available. No, we do not have that. That's okay. Let's try another one. No, that's not available either. Oh, no, sorry, it is available. My bad. It's available right here. So as you can see, this one is not available according to our Medline search, but once I've clicked there, it's popping up and we can access it. All right. So do, if we were to click that full text available, we wouldn't have seen this at all. So it's better not to do that. Another thing that I did want to mention is methodology. The type of study you're looking for. Okay. I would strongly discourage you from clicking these on the side. And the reason is um, these are indexed, okay? This means that we, let's just say you were looking for evidence-based practice. Um, it needed to be in here. So it needs to be within an index, okay? However, when you search evidence-based practice over here as part of your search strategy, it will find articles that aren't indexed that way. So it could be in the title, abstract, um, and in the entire paper. So it will make sure that you pick up all the evidence-based literature. So I'm gonna get rid of Australia. Um, Australia. I could put randomized control trials in here as well. Let's just do, although I don't think mortality will have a randomized control trial, but I don't know. Make sure you put um, <laughs> both American spelling and also uh, Australian spelling as well. And notice how they don't put a capital R in the suggest OR in the capital uh, in the suggestions down there. That's okay. We're just going to go in and put it in. Again, get into the habit. It's our CT. Yep. And then hit search. 78. So that is how you would search for a methodology. 
And notice here on the side, it says that Medline has 42, Sunal has 28, and PsycInfo has eight. So you can see how many articles per database you're searching, okay? Now, we're gonna take these same concepts that we learned here to places like Informet, Scofus, and Cochrane and Joanna Briggs Institute. So, Informet, right here. We're gonna go into Scofus. I'll just open them all up. right there, Joanna Briggs Institute. Now this database looks a little different, so JBI. Yes, that is the correct one. Um, and the other one was the Cochrane. Library right here. All right, so Informat. Now, Informat shows you a lot of Australian literature as well, um, Australian research. You can also get things like government research and in Informat as well. It is it's another powerful tool. It is definitely not as powerful as this. You can throw anything in an EBSCO platform on Medline, Sinal, and PsycInfo, and it is powerful enough to process it. In format, not so much, okay? So I always say keep your searches simple in informant. okay? Over here, you can put 10 synonyms and Medline Sinal and Psych Info on EBSCOhost will process it, whereas in format will just start to glitch a little bit, okay? So you basically do, again, Work smarter, not harder, the same thing I did. And again, it might be relevant for you to use this database. It might not. Do talk to the library to figure out which databases are useful to you. Whoops. Okay. And then we hit search zero so clearly my search was too complicated it happens do not freak out too much it can happen and that's okay we just have to go back and find it so we don't have much on informant in this area and that's okay, there's only two, but it's always good to have a look or even just really simplify your search strategy with this. Again, one of one, no issues there. You might find in a more um, public health, social science-y type question in here, you might find resources for that, but otherwise it's generally, the search is not as powerful, but yes, do have a look. It's very good informant when you actually can find what you need to find, okay? You might do alcohol and see what shows up, more results. So it's really funny how binge drinking doesn't show up, but alcohol does. Okay. You want to get rid of mortality. Sometimes your Pico will not work in a database like Informit. So we just simplify our searches more and more. So this, that's how you would essentially hack informant, okay? Not as powerful, but the re results are just as good. Then we have Scopus, another one. This is a multidisciplinary um, database. If your question is not too biomedical, 
uh, Scopus is another good place to go. Okay, we're going to add a search field, add a search field. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to check something. It didn't cross my mind. Yes, this was correct. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Adults. Young. Adult. Okay. Binge. Drinking. Heavy drinking. Use. Now, Scopus does something funny, and I'll show you in a bit, and we can show you how to fix it. Mortality or death. We'll keep it simple. Make sure that's all and combined. Look what happened there. 102 documents. That's a very good set of results. But notice over here what it does, that between young adults, they automatically put an end. Okay. We don't want that. We want to go back. We can just put commas around it. Quotation marks, sorry, not commas. And that will ensure that we only get that phrase. And that brings you to 3,000 results. You might think, oh, no, I only wanted 102. No, that 102 was very limiting. Okay? By putting in quotation marks... You have limited within your synonyms, but expanded the, the, the concept. So you're going to get more that is relevant to you. Okay, in Scopus. And like I said, you can refine by last 10 years. And filter by year. Scopus, you have to click in. Please. Limit to 1,700 almost. Um, document type, if you wanted to look at an article. Um, limit to. And I would not, again, use country or territory here. I find it's a bit bit too limiting. If I wanted to limit to an Australian study, I would put it in my search term. Okay. And that again goes with any of these. Okay. Language, affiliation, whatever you wanted. Um I would not put those um filters in. So yes, you do have a good set of results. Again, if you wanted to limit to a, a country or publication, a research method, like a randomized control trial, do go in to your search strategy. Now this looks very complicated, I know. So let's go back and let's go back again and do it through here. I don't really want, I don't think we're at the stage to do a search like that super complicated one that I just showed you, okay? And that's what you get, okay? Because if you click edit, you get something, in this case, you get something like this. But once you start putting all your filters in, you'll get a whole string search, which is actually really hard and really complicated. And I suggest that you sit down with a librarian to do that. Okay. But otherwise, this is the type of search that we want. And we can put
method okay and then hit search oh we can put them in accidentally pressed enter in quotation marks but i'll just put rct Feel free to put in the American spelling on whatnot afterwards, but for example's sake, I'll put it here. So that's how you would do a search. All right, go back into edit and you can get something like this. Okay. Once you start putting in filters, it gets a lot more complicated to edit your search. Try and get back to this page. Okay. It's just to make things easier for you. Okay. So that's Scopus. Um, next thing we're going to show you is actually the Joanna Briggs database. So we're going to click JBI, Evidence-Based Practice Database, right here. Okay. Once you go into JBI. This looks very, very different. Okay, now it is a completely different search style and that's okay. Essentially, this platform of it forces you to search in a very systematic manner. And it's actually a lot more simpler than you think. It might take a little bit longer, but again, a lot more simpler than you think. Again, we're just going to copy and paste our search that we did here. Oops, not there. And I'm just going to hit search. Okay. Doesn't matter what you see. Yes, I know there's 3,000 plus results, almost 4,000 4, results there. Don't worry about it. Um. Okay. Now let's just say you made a mistake in your search. We can edit, edit. Okay, make sure it's all done. Okay, in Ovid, it doesn't make a difference if you put a capital OR, okay? And that's how you will check if it makes a difference in the number of results. Now we've got that. We're going to click these. And like our Boolean, we're going to combine with AND. 23 results in the Joanna Briggs Institute. Don't worry if you don't get that many results in JBI. Um, it's because they only have a select few pieces of research in their database anyway. And you just access them here. Yeah. Again, depending on your area of research, uh, there are certain databases that are better to use than others, okay? And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's how you would search the JBI database. 
Again, same concept with Cochrane. You're not going to get that many results in Cochrane either. They're very select with the amount of research that they have. Now, Cochrane is evidence-based, okay? Please do not use the Pico search here. It's very gimmicky. It's clunky. It doesn't work very well, okay? Do just add in your... search terms okay um it's really about trial and error in some of these databases that that are not as powerful as your EBSCO as your Medline Sinal and Psych Info okay mortality death a run search. There's nine Cochrane reviews. Okay, and again, custom range your date, so on and so forth. Okay, you can find trials here. whatever you need. Very cool. Now, you might be asking why we don't search PubMed. And the reason we don't search PubMed is because we're already searching Medline. Okay? Medline, every everything that's in Medline is on PubMed, yes. But not everything on PubMed is on Medline. And the only reason is, is that Medline goes through a more rigorous peer review process. Okay. So on PubMed, you're going to find things like policies as well. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the PubMed search is not as comprehensive, not as powerful as Medline is. Medline is more systematic. Um, it's it's it allows you to search more easily as well, unlike PubMed. Um, and this is why I do not recommend the use of PubMed because it's it's not user friendly. If you do need to use PubMed, and if you would like to use PubMed, do you get in touch with your librarian um, because we can help you with that. Um, but again, Medline is a better alternative to PubMed. It goes through a more rigorous peer review process to get into Medline. It's indexed a lot better. Um, and in general, it's easier to find things on Medline once you have figured out how to search Medline properly. Okay, so I would steer clear of PubMed. Rather, it's not recommended at all. So the one thing you might have noticed while throughout this whole thing is the concept of mesh which is a medical subject heading. So a mesh, think of it as like a um, term to categorize things. It's an in, think of it as an index, okay? It's a controlled vocabulary. That's what it actually is. And it's written by the US National Library of Medicines. Um, and it's like a thesaurus. So essentially in databases that use MeSH, which is Menline, Sinal, and PsycInfo, as well as Cochrane as well, and PubMed, and also Web of Science, use it as well. These, it makes your search more powerful. It makes it more comprehensive. And sometimes, sometimes we use MeSH to search for articles that might not have those certain terms in the title abstract or content as much. 
more and more people are publishing you know, strategically and having really cool and funky names for their articles. So you might not even know that an article is about mental health, health just by its um, article title or its research title. And that's why we search it. Um, and it gives uniformity and consistency to the indexing and catalogue of biomedical literature. It is a distinctive feature of Medline slash PubMed. Um, and it's arranged in a hierarchical manner called the mesh tree structures. And it is updated manually. Um, for a long time, uh, First Nations mesh term was not used very well. It, it was not um, a mesh term that was assigned to documents very well. It was way too broad and it did not encapsulate uh, Australian First Nations very well, First Nations research, unfortunately. And so that's why it gets updated annually. People make suggestions and we're like, hey, maybe this should be a proper mesh term and they assign it to it. Um, so a bunch of specialists would read the article and be like, yep, this is the mesh term for this article. So that's how they're assigned. Okay, so I'm going to go back in to our EBSCO. Now, notice how we don't have the mesh here anymore like we did when I first showed you this database. That's because we're searching through all of this. Now, the mesh for each database is slightly different. Okay. Well, we're going to stick to Medline first. Okay. There are two ways to find out your mesh. I'm going to X out of this. The first is going to the National Library of Medicine and finding their mesh. So you can actually just, oops, mesh um, NLM, oops, can't type. So National Library, and it just comes up. Okay, and you go to the Mesh browser, and type in whatever you need to, one of your search terms, for example, cardiovascular disease. Oh. Okay, what it means. Mesh tree structure, yep, it's a mesh term. And all the different types of qualifiers. So it's on the mesh tree. Okay. You can click on these trees and find out more and more um, mesh terms associated with that large mesh term to see what you can use for your search strategy, but it's really up to you. Alcohol abuse. Let's see what Mesh comes up with. Okay. See also these ones. Again, if it suits your research needs, you can. Where it falls in the Mesh tree, Alcoholism right there. Been drinking is one. We can click on that. And you can see it, where it is and where it falls under. And this can help your searching. Okay. Now, this might seem a little confusing to you why we are searching it like this. You don't have to. Um, but it's a good way to figure out what mesh headings exist for your search terms. I'm gonna show you another method. Personally, I find this a little bit easier. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go back into Medline. Okay. Notice the mesh there. 
If I was to choose multiple databases, this would completely disappear because the mesh headings do not, the same mesh headings do not go in through uh, Psyc-Info or um, Sonal. All right. We're going to go into advanced search. Notice this here, suggest subject terms. Now, this search method, is the way I'm going to search right now, takes a little longer, but I find it a lot more easier a lot more, it's easy on the eyes, it's easier to understand. So here's what we're going to do, adults. Okay, make sure you have this ticked. Search. And look at that, we've got our mesh tree. You can actually go in and have a look at the scope notes. Now you can select both of these right now, okay? I just have a preference of putting them in one by one. So remember what you've seen here. I'm gonna search database. Okay, that's done. Now click here. Just let it come down. There we go. It shows what you're searching. Again, I'm going to click here again, and I'm going to search in adult right there and young adult selected. Okay, scope note, search database. All right, so these are our two mesh terms. Now we're going to continue searching what we did here, adult or young adult. Feel free to put in more, okay? And we're gonna, oh no, what have I done? All right, sorry, I had to go back. I'm gonna select abstract. And title. Okay. When you are using mesh, you need to do this. Okay. Adult or young adult, adult or young adult. You can put an asterisk there as well for adults. I make mistakes too, but that's okay. We can always go fix them abstract and title. We are refining our search. We are really going to hit this search engine in its guts and give it some work to do. Okay, a title and abstract search. This is a more systematic way of searching. And we put or here, not and, not yet. Okay, because technically this is the same concept. I'm going to search. Okay. You can rerun these. Just give it a second. There. Search history. Okay. It's only got it's got like one million results. Again, do not freak out. Up. Oh. It just went back there. Don't worry. And back, back where we were. Again, do not worry about it. All right, so we've finished our adult. Feel free to put in more subject terms, but the same way we did it here. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to select this, this, and this. And we are going to combine with or remember they're synonyms. Okay. Synonyms. Six million results. Again, do not freak out. Okay. This is six million results of every single paper that uses the word adult, young adult in their heading, subject, abstract title, in their mesh. 
And what I mean by mesh is that, let's just say you wanted to click in. By searching mesh, you are searching this, this bit here. Okay, go back. Now, always remember when you search something, we clear this field out. Okay, so we've got our adults out of the way. We want to put binge drinking. Okay, remember, suggest subject terms, search. We're searching mesh now. There is one, binge drinking. Read the scope notes. Okay. Have a look at all the other things in here. Is it useful to you, drinking, consumption of liquids? No, it's not. It could be anything. Underage drinking. We're not focused on underage. Unless you're focusing in America and the legal age of drinking is 21 years old, but and if you were drinking at 19, 18, 19 years old, would that be considered underage drinking? These are things you need to find out, okay? And you can do this just by um, doing some simple background reading and research. Alcohol drinking, we can do that. But again, like I said, I like searching one by one. Okay, binge drinking. Okay, so just subject terms. Alcohol drinking. Search database. Okay, we're done. Right here. Okay. You could have chosen to separate these searches as well. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So remember in library search, I searched it in one line. I can also do this. In shrinking. Or abstract. Title and hit search, okay? And then I could do alcohol abuse. Okay, and separately. For example sake, I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm not gonna add in any more terms just so we can be quick. Make sure this is clear. Okay. We're going to select our binge drinking category and combine them with all. Okay. 98,000 results. Again, do not freak out. Mortality is our next. Suggest subject terms, search, mortality. And you can look at the scope notes. Search database. Okay. Death, a bit morbid, but it's all right. There we go. We've got one. Search database. Feel free to put more in. I'm not going to at this stage. Like I said, this is an example. If you were doing a proper search, you would put more. If you could find more. Again, more tality. Okay. Make sure that's or. Make sure that's abstract and title. Doesn't matter which order you put it in but it just has to have it in there, okay? Untick, search, again, death. You can put dying as well. Like I said, you can put as many synonyms as you want, medline, 
psych info so now they can handle it but like I said for example sake I'm keeping it very simple I have seen search strategies go up to 40 lines okay 50 lines 60 lines that's absolutely normal okay combine with all 1.7 million okay let's not freak out we're going to clear this now we're going to click on the concepts that we have combined, so mortality and death, alcohol abuse, and adult. And we're going to combine them with and. Remember our Boolean. 4,000 results. It's actually a really nice number. Of course, the more synonyms and the more terms you use, you can refine and uh, expand. But that's actually a really nice set of results for this kind of search. Okay, we're going to hit clear and we're going to go down. 2013, oops, <laughs> I cannot type. And hit enter my, there we go. <laughs> And it has not combined the results together. It's given me 12 million. I don't know why I didn't do that. It shouldn't have done that. But the way to fix this, just delete the search. Just that one. Make sure we view the results for this. It can happen. Again, it can glitch. And now go into 2013. And it should, there we go, combine it. It has combined it. Put that limitation in. 17, 1800, another good set of results. Again, you can go in before you put in your limitations for your publication dates. You can put in location. You can put in um type of study like a randomized control trial or evidence-based practice so on and so forth whatever whatever you need just be mindful that when you do do location I'm going to show you Australia as a mesh term now notice this but it's also got South Australia, Western Australia, Victoria. But where's where's all the other states? That's okay. We're going to click into Australia right here. Oop, where did it go? Australia, right there. Now notice how there's all the other states inside it. We don't want to search them all separately. No, it takes too much time. Explode. The explode button. And what the explode button will do, it will search all of these. Okay, and then you can hit search database and then combine all your concepts again. Okay, I hope that this has made sense. Okay, I know these numbers are very intimidating, 6 million, 1.8 million, but that's okay because once you do combine them, you get a very nice number. If you were to combine before putting in this date publication, if you were to combine it with Australia, okay, for example, we want our final one with Australia, we can combine them and then put in a date range. Okay, we have to have a systematic order for it to make sense to us. Okay. And here you can do this with Medline. Medline has its mesh. If you go into, sorry, let's just go into Sanal, you will know if they use mesh just by going into the database. Because A, it has Sanal subject headings there. And when you go into advanced search, um, you can search it. Okay, you can search it. Same thing with Psych Info. A 
again, their own um, index right there. And you can find it. You can choose to have a look at it. So just subject terms. It's 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 open to you, and it looks slightly different as well. See, it looks completely different to what we did here. Completely different, at least in the subject term area. Very different trees right there. So, like I said, it depends on the database you are using. Yes, Mesh is good for things, uh, where's my Mesh tree go? For things like um, Medline, but some of the other uh, databases have their own Mesh trees and you can use them and okay, their own subject headings. If you are confused and you need help, do get in touch with the library. Um, you know, we can sit down with you and help you do this as well. Okay. I'm going back to our PowerPoint. Next up, oh, I've shown you this. Yes, evaluating resources. So we've got our CRAP test. <laughs> and yes, it's called CRAP. And basically what it stands for is the currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. So is it current, the timeliness of this information? Is it relevant? Who is the author, publisher, et cetera, et cetera? Do they have an agenda, you know? Accuracy, where does the information come from? Is it supported by evidence? Has it been peer reviewed or refereed? Is it unbiased or free of emotion? Purpose, the reason the information exists. What is the purpose of this information? Is it to inform, teach, sell, entertain, so on and so forth? Why does this information exist? So these are things you really need to look at, especially when you're using Google and gray literature um, for your uh, resource, for your research. You need to think about why this was written, who it was written for, and you know what's the purpose. So this is how we would evaluate resources. Okay, just really think about it. Some other library resources that we have, and I'm going to show them to you right now. So going back to the library website, we're going to go back to library home. Okay, we're going to go into subject guides right here. And just let it load. We're going to go into health and human sciences. And then we have the health research guide. Okay, we've got a number of resources for you right here. Finding resources, evaluating resources, referencing, um, search strategies. You can click on to a whole bunch of things. Um, but the crap test. Okay. Getting the most out of your study. Is the journal peer reviewed or not? Search strategies. Some pretty cool resources. Okay. So again, subject guides, health and human sciences, um, health research guide. Okay. This is what will help you. And we also have the evidence-based practice guide over here. Again, another useful one. And it shows you the hierarchy of evidence if you needed to go into that. Finding the evidence, your PICO, critical appraisal, whatever you need to do. Again, this is all at your disposal. You can go to the library website and access them through subject guides, referencing help right here. And again, if you do need help, just go into assessment help and contact the library or the librarians or book an appointment, whatever you need. We have a range of options for you as well. If you need writing skill help or language and learning work, 
advisor. Workshops as well. There's a lot of workshops coming up for postgrad as well. So do, do have a look at our library website. It's got some fantastic things in it. All right. That's it for this session. Again, if you do need any more help, do get in touch with the library. Um, you can email us at askthelibrary at cdu.edu.au. Thank you.